Good morning. It's Friday morning, October 27, 2023. This is Rob Sin at CEO Technician on Twitter, on YouTube, Goldfinger Capital, and CEO.ca at Goldfinger. Uh, this morning, I'd like to talk a little bit about key characteristics of breakout junior mining stocks, or just stocks that are bullish, generally speaking, but in this conversation, specifically junior mining stocks. A few bullet points here. Um, yeah, this is pretty basic stuff, but a lot of people forget it. And a lot of junior mining traders and investors lose sight of these key characteristics. And sometimes when these key characteristics are not present, they're using um, different kind of rationale to stay in a stock or to avoid buying a stock. So we're going to just talk about the key characteristics that I've noticed in big gainers, big gainers in the junior mining sector in the last decade. This is relevant because of Hercules Silver, big on the venture and the move that it has had in the month of October from 25 cents to $1. Currently at the time of this video, 89 cents. And it's interesting because Hercules shows, it demonstrates a lot of the key characteristics of a breakout junior mining stock, including a huge increase in volume, some big range days, some big accumulation days at the start of this move, and even some potential bearish reversal days. Uh, this list is not comprehensive. It's not every key characteristic of a bullish stock, but these are some of the most important ones that I've noticed over the years. The first one is the simplest one, but some people lose sight of this. A bullish stock is going to be making higher highs and higher lows, and it's gonna to continue to trend higher by making higher highs and higher lows. A stock that is making lower lows and lower highs is not a bullish stock. So regardless of whatever fundamental thesis one might have, if the price action is sloping downward, it is by definition not bullish. Technical analysis 101. The strongest stocks, and I'm going to go back to Patriot Battery Metals earlier uh, in 2022, so last year, uh, Patriot Battery Metals had very strong accumulation volume in March of 2022. So this initial leg higher from 75 cents to above a dollar, very big accumulation volume. And Patriot was actually very instructive because it went through these periods of accumulation and then it rested and consolidated on lighter volume, but it did not move down much in terms of price during these resting periods. The most bullish stocks will have, you know, 10%, 20% pullbacks, they won't drop 50% during their periods of consolidation. 50% is not a consolidation, it's a correction, or some people would call it a full-blown uh, bear market. And you can see that throughout this advance from March through end of May of 2022, it had these big volume bursts on these large um, accumulation days, big rally days, and then it went through periods of resting and consolidating on lighter volume. So this was actually a textbook bullish stock. Um, also notice over here in early May, it printed a bearish or potentially bearish topping candlestick. There it was a spinning top. Then it confirmed that with a large body red candlestick the next day. And the market was telling us that the 275 level was resistance and then it moved lower before finding support right back here at the previous consolidations and so patriot traded very well just according to technicals and holding price levels and then you can see when it was ready to break out again and make a new high it had this 
full body bullish gap and run candlestick. So it gapped higher and then it proceeded to rise. And then it rose even further over the subsequent three to four uh, trading sessions. And then also over here, when it was dropping, suffering a big correction, more than 50%, it found support at exactly the $2 level. Buyers showed up right there at that support level. So Patriot really traded well, according to uh, chart technicals. Aston Bay, this is one that's more recent. This is relevant to 2023, August, September of this year. Had a tremendous rise. You would see this huge accumulation volume on this surge higher. One of the warning signs uh, that we want to look out for in a bullish stock that might be about to reverse lower is the volume dries up. Simply put, the volume dries up. There's, there's no longer the same kind of level of buying interest in the stock. So there was a lot of buying interest down here at $0.08, cents, $0.10, cents, $0.12, cents, even all the way up to uh, $0.20. Cents. But over here, you can see the volume dropped off markedly. And then it had this sort of trap move where it gapped higher on this day, this big green candlestick or white candlestick. Um, Close basically at session highs and then look what it did subsequent trading session it opened lower and gapped through gapped under the previous day's range and kept selling so this was an extremely bearish reversal in Aston Bay really uh, textbook when this uh, sort of bearish candlestick pattern happens and price cannot Recover, cannot find a bid, that's your sign to get out. You can see what happens. So we're talking about a drop from 30 cents <clears throat> down to 5 cents in Aston Bay uh, from early September. But really the volume was a big tell in this one, that it was just running out of buying interest. There was no longer the same level of accumulation. Um, and in fact, sellers were starting to overpower buyers. Amex exploration. So this is from early uh, 2019. You can see January 2019, big surge of volume buying. And this is really the tell when you see a big volume surge on a breakout day. So when price is breaking out of its previous range, moving to a new high above the previous range high, that is your sort of buy signal in these bullish stocks. And as long as the volume stays strong and price is making higher lows and higher highs, it's in a bullish trend. There's no reason to really overthink it. So Amex went from 20 cents to 60 cents, consolidated a little bit, and then went through a new accumulation trend from 50 cents to a uh, dollar. 50 there by February, by the end of February, 2019. And then again, so just like Aston Bay, the volume dropping off Amex, the volume started to really, you know, decline in March price started to trend lower a little bit, but still pretty small range days. But then let's look what happened. If we go out to the end of April, 2019, it went even lower. So this was more than a 50% correction in AMAX. Actually, it was more like 60% from 150 to um, 60 cents. Yeah, that's 60%. So that's, and just a very steady drop on, on light volume. Just buyers weren't really as enthused as they were back over here, a sign that just price had gotten a bit ahead of itself. Um, and that's an important thing to understand that even the biggest, you know, winners in the junior mining sector. So if we look, if we fast forward on Amex, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll eventually see that this stock went to $4 in late 2020, but it had experienced tremendous volatility. So for those people who think you just need to buy and hold these stocks, well, if you're going to do that, 
even your biggest winners are going to experience 50%, 60% drawdowns. That's not everybody's cup of tea. And it can shake a lot of people. Uh, it can shake the shares loose from a lot of people's hands during those, those uh, really deep drawdowns. I mean, 60% drop from high to low, a lot of people think, well, now it's a bearish stock, it's in a bearish trend, which would be true in that moment. But then the bigger picture trend, the bull market resumes and people end up selling at the lows. And so that's why I think you have to have a, a profit taking strategy. If you're trading these stocks, you cannot just hold them forever. Um, and certainly on a move, like Amex, 20 cents to $1.50, you have to be taking profits at some point on the way up. Kodiak Copper, so this one was uh, mentioned to me as being similar to Hercules Silver, both in terms of the fact that it's a, a, a porphyry copper story and just sort of the way the price action has been. Yes, it's similar, it's similar in a lot of ways, but notice how uh, with Kodiak, the volume was only heavy in the first week of the move, and then it really just sort of fizzled out. Then a lot of that has to do with the share structure. So with Hercules Silver, there's a lot more shares outstanding than there were in Kodiak Copper back in September 2020. So you have to also uh, put the volume, the trading volume, into context with the company's share structure. Do a little math. What's the average daily trading volume, let's say, over the last couple of weeks? And then what percentage of the total shares outstanding is that, right? And then see how uh, the trading volume is moving as a percentage of, you know, the, the shares outstanding. And then compare it to other breakout stocks like Patriot, like Aston Bay, like Amex 2019, like Kodiak. 2020. Uh, another thing about Kodiak is you can see can, uh, candlestick analysis is really important. First of all, you had a large wick, sort of a topping tail on this candlestick. You got a pullback then, then it came back to retest the same area, 320 to 340 area. And again, it printed a candlestick with a large topping tail on it, uh, sort of a a wick on the upper side of the candlestick, and then it proceeded to experience a very big decline from 340 down to 140 over the span of one month. So again, these big movers can have big drawdowns, big drawdowns. And this ended up actually being the top for Kodiak. This wasn't the, the top in Amex, this wasn't the top in Patriot battery metals, but so far, this is the top in, in Kodiak Copper. You can also see the volume, the downside volume really started to kick in here um, at the end of October, 2020. And then I'm just throwing this out there right now, because this is Patriot battery metals right now. You can see, well, it's $11 a share. Look back here. It was only three or $4 a share back in 2022. Well, now it's $11 a share, but look, it's been in a downtrend from $17 back in June. And Patriot is working on trying to put in a bottom here. Since September, it's been working on sort of forming a little bit of a mini head and shoulders bottom pattern. This is something to watch. Uh, we would like to see a volume acceleration here if this does break out to the upside from this bottoming pattern. So again, simple stuff here. The best technical analysis is simple technical analysis. Higher highs and higher lows, guys. It doesn't get much simpler than that. We need strong volume. The most bullish stocks have strong volume that remains strong. There will be periods of resting in consolidation, even in the most you know, bullish stocks with the biggest gains, they will have to rest for periods of time. This will usually be on lighter trading volume and price will consolidate. Sometimes price can even pull back 20 to 30% during these periods of consolidation. The start of the strong, the strongest trends start with big range days, big accumulation days, 
and they end with lower range, smaller uh, trading sessions that often mark short to medium term tops, even major all time high tops. The best, most bullish stocks support and key resistance levels work pretty well most of the time. You will also get sometimes failed moves where it will test the level, break through it, uh, you know, like intraday and then move right back above it. That's even better. Okay. The best stocks will also have those failed moves, both failed breakouts and failed breakdowns. The bullish ones will have way more failed breakdowns than failed breakouts, right? And even the biggest, you know, winners, the biggest risers, even Great Bear, 25 cents to $29, will experience multiple 50% drawdowns during their multi year uh, rises. That's just the nature of the beast. Junior mining stocks are extremely volatile, tricky as can be, but they can also generate massive moves. 5x, 10x, even 20x in relatively short periods of time. But the sword, the knife can cut both ways. They can also drop huge, like Aston Bay. So I hope you found this video to be of some value. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I hope you have a powerful trading day.